yo, it's Guido coming at you with a, a kind of mini review every once in a while. I'll pick up a tank along the way in, in the Hunter Battle Challenge and we'll we'll do a little slightly deeper dive without actually doing a full up review on this thing. But this is the T23 E3, which is kind of a little oddball that's been hanging around the hanging around in the game for a while now. There's been a couple ways to get it along the way. I think I think it started as one you could build in some kind of Clan Wars event. Could be wrong on that. Correct me if uh, if you know where this initially came out. Somehow I got a hold of it along the way. I couldn't even tell you how. Maybe it's a Bond tank now. I don't know. You know, if I was doing a really accurate review, I'd know all this information. But all I do know is that this tank is in the game. And I have one. And I am working on the Hunter Battle Challenge with it. It's a it's goofy. It's a Tier 7. It's a U.S. Tier 7 kind of prototype tank. Looks a little bit like a Pershing-ish. Maybe with kind of a Sherman turret going on. According to the write-up, it was a... Well, it was actually prototype, so it was built, but it never went into production, nor did it see any kind of combat. In the game, it's got a little tiny gun that does about 150 alpha. We'll get to that in just a minute. But this is a throwback right here, so let's talk about it. I do have some gameplay on it. I don't hate it, right? But it's no autoloader. Like, who even plays non-autoloaders these days? Or it doesn't have a 750 alpha derp gun either, so... Why would you even play this thing? You know what I'm saying? So I guess that concludes my review of the uh, of the T23E3. <laughs> I got I kind of like it. I'm not telling you you're going to burn up the uh, burn up the matches in this thing, but let's just take a quick look at how it's doing just so we set expectations in the correct position and that yeah, he is down here, guys. T23E3 amongst all the tier 7 mediums, yeah. Struggle. Struggles a bit. Although I was a bit surprised by how many people are playing it. I mean, it's on the low end, but I would have suspected a lot fewer. But I think generally pretty good players own this thing. But uh, yeah, it's not it's not really uh, tearing things up. But let's take a look at how I've got mine set up. I've got a Bounty Turbocharger. This is sort of a mobility spotting kind of setup. I've got optics and a rammer, so it's a sort of halfway in between. I really, I've unlocked the ability to have two setups. Really what I need to do is have some kind of vision setup for maps like Malinovka or Proc, and then some kind of combat setup for the city maps. Ah, that's too much work for this one. Maybe I'll do that a little while later, but for now we've got this halfway in between. I am running Cola on this thing. I have a significant amount of APCR, as noted. 115, I guess I said 110, but 115 alpha is, well, that's the 76 millimeter idea with the uh, the Sherman, right, down at tier 6. Pens at 149, which is decent, and 190 with the APCR round. Yeah, I've got a lot of HE, but this thing carries so many rounds. Who cares? Who cares? What does that give me? If we look over here on the stats, which may be a little bit hard for you to see there, but it loads quickly at 2.67. Comes out with 2,588 DPM. You're going to see the effects of the fast firing little gun, at least some of them. Some of the good effects, I guess we can say, which is things like tracking people and being very annoying. Minus 10 on the gun depression, 1.97 aim time, and 0.3 dispersion. So a relatively accurate gun down here at tier 7. Shoots fast, does not hit hard, has pretty good DPM. Survivability, it's a thousand hit points. The armor and the turret armor is not much, even though it's sort of got the American-esque turret. Think more like a Sherman turret, because you're only sitting there with 76, and it may very well be exactly the Sherman turret. 76 armor on the turret, 76 in the hole with okay angling, but not amazing. So you're you're not gonna bounce much with this guy with this thing, guys. It does have some good mobility at 61.3. I've also done the field mod. So that my reverse speed is pretty good. Is that right? 35? That's insane. I did not realize that. 35 backwards. Well, okay then. Wow. I did add the the field mod that gave me a few more miles per hour, but goodness gracious, it was already in the 30s to begin with. That's crazy. The camo is decent at 24 and 18 for moving and spotting the way I've got this set up because I'm running the food, brothers in arms, and I've got the optics, I'm over the max at 483. So that's a good thing. So I'm kind of playing this thing as a, not necessarily a scout, but it can fill the role, especially mid to late game when there's less tanks running around. 
and being just the the annoying kind of harrying tank medium tank out there it's it's relatively big it's it's sort of the shape of say a t20 t21 and in that size class which means when you're running it as a scout that it, it's it doesn't sneak and fit into many of the smaller bushes in the game but really all of that is just to say it's it's an all-rounder and not a really good all-rounder but at least it has some mobility at least it has some dpm and while the gun doesn't hit hard it can be annoying i think that's about the best that you can say out of this tank how have i done i've only played nine games in the thing so far guys but i've done okay with it we're at 67 percent right now tiny tiny sample size hits at 69 percent the interesting thing about the fast loading guns like this is sometimes your your hit rate suffers a bit because you tend to shoot a bunch so there'll be more snapshots maybe knocking down buildings you feel like because you have the extra ammo and the fast reload that you can do a few more things with the gun than just sit there and look for that perfect shot at least in my opinion that seems to be what kind of happens damage ratio 1.45 destruction at three and for each one i lose i'll leave the armor efficiency yeah it's not even situational the turret i mean imagine going up against tier nines and this thing was 72 turret armor or 78 or whatever it was plus the whole it's just they're just consider it not having any armor 1147 average damage a little bit low 801 assist at least so far that little setup and that mindset of playing it more as an assist and a support medium has panned out pretty well with a relatively high assist right there now it's only nine battles, so maybe I've got you know a three thousand or four thousand assists hiding in those nine. Let's jack those numbers up. We'll see what happens after a hundred, but so far it's indicating that the plan is more or less working. Two thousand four hundred fifty-seven max damage, and I killed four in one battle. So that's what we've got for this thing. All right, I do have some gameplay for you. We'll go ahead and roll to that. Uh, I did these a little bit disjointed, so I do appreciate your support of the channel. That's all I've got for this part of it. Enjoy the gameplay. We'll see. Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the Tactics Talk. Had this game a little while ago. It's Platoon with Yuhu and Zemke. I'm in my T23E3. Turns out to be an ace tanker. wanted to show this because this is kind of an unusual tank. Not a whole lot of them out there, and you rarely ever see it get played. Good setup for it, though. We're top tier in a platoon. And sitting on Siegfried Leindorf, so we'll just get the preliminaries out of the way. And I will drive this thing into the spot that I like to go to. I think it's a little too exposed anymore, but top tier with the platoon, you might get away with this. If they send, say, a couple of the BZ-58s over here, I might be in big trouble. People don't usually go into this courtyard from the other side en masse, but if they notice that something weak like this tank is in here, they may start to push you. I don't know. It, it's an aggressive spot. I don't think a lot of people, a lot of good players would necessarily go here early. It's harder to get into later based on guys looking down the alley off to my left side. And this is what I was kind of worried about, a BZ-58. That's a good play for the BZ-58 at this tier. He doesn't have a whole lot of whole lot to fear from anything, especially this tank. Now, the things about this, this tank is that its alpha is terrible. No, I get this guy coming across. I don't know what he's doing, which I appreciate what he's doing because he's just giving me shots. We'll talk about the tank and the alpha in a minute. I'd love to tuck up into this position here. The problem is we have I'm the beast and so he's going to be shooting onto my turret. So I'm really kind of stuck here and I can't back up too much because I'll have guys behind me. So it's not a great position. And this is what I'm talking about. The BZ-58 does us a solid and just YOLOs in. So the terrible play on his part. I see this dude crossing. So we'll try to put a shot there. Same discussion in terms of being exposed from the T-78. Bad shot. Now he's behind some... I think there's a fountain right there. And now I've got multiple guys. Same discussion. I can't really back up because I don't want to get hit by the BZ. Good news is I've got a couple guys over on the zero line that are helping me bounce off him. That's a bummer. Do get a shot there. See the, see that little alpha? I don't. That's 115, I believe. Is it? Yeah, 115. So it's using the little 76. This was an experimental, not experimental, but a development tank for the U.S. Kind of looks like a bit like a Pershing hole right here, follow one kind of idea. And maybe with some kind of, I don't know, is that actually a... Looks very similar to a Sherman turret on a slightly bigger hole right there. Already starting to shoot in there. This is tier 7, man. You got 115 alpha medium at tier 7. That's... That's pretty painful. 
So you need a lot of shots. So I'm going to get pushed here pretty quickly and probably should have been taken out of the game right here. But the nice thing about it is that shot rate, right? The firing rate. While I'm not doing a whole lot of alpha with every shot, I can shoot quickly. And that gives me some options for whittling people down, tracking them, causing issues like that. Also, the more shots you put into people, the more opportunities you have for criticals, even though you don't have a high alpha and may not be overcoming the module stuff. Um, and that's not necessarily a direct correlation. I don't know what this guy's doing. But the smaller guns tend to have a lower module damage. He got thumped hard. He hits me once, and we kill him. So that's the first guy that comes at me. Now I got shot in the, I get shot in the back by the Cheeto, so I can't really sneak too far back. So that's a bummer. And I'm down to 367. That Cheeto hit really hurt. So there he is. I'm hoping the Challenger can kill him. I, I really, I mean, on the one hand, I'm pretty happy the Challenger did what he did, because I think he's going to kill the Cheeto right here. There we go. On the other hand, he sort of just yellows in. Now we got this guy thinking about coming across. We'll put a shot into him and miss. That's unfortunate. He's giving us some opportunities there. Sneak one onto him. That's insane. That shot even hit. The Challenger goes in. I don't know. Not really sure what he's doing here. Dies. Let's see if we can sneak one on this guy. Nope. Bad shot. Oh, look out. Don't get me, Firefly. Firefly is looking at me. Then we have the CC-56 pushing in. Now this gives me an opportunity to shoot the guys in the back because they're turning the deal with this guy, although he looks at me and either misses or doesn't shoot. The Firefly gets tracked. That allows me to pop in there and take that shot. That's what I was discussing in terms of the firing rate. It does give you options, right? That, that guy uses rockets. I think he's, is he stuck because of his rockets. He might have been stuck because of his rockets trying to make the turn. Just boom, boom, boom. Shots into that guy. And sneak a kill shot on that. Really shouldn't even be alive, but there you go. Solid play by the CC. I do appreciate that. That kept me alive. Now we got guys over here. This dude has a rapid fire gun. Thank you to Yuhu. who's probably saved me from at least one shot and maybe being killed. I think that's the tier 7 version of that tank, if I'm not mistaken. No, tier 6, I mean. Which would make it the autoloader version. All right, there's a tier 5 that is a premium. And I believe that's the tier 6 autoloading version. That's an actually on the check line. And the other one is on the German line as a captured Skoda thing. So I'm going to post up here for a moment. I'm a one shot, easy one shot to the Jag Panther. I don't want to get circled by the T50 2, and I don't want to get ganked by both Artie coming at me. We're sort of trying to track down the T50 2. There's one Artie. All right, so he's probably busy now that he's lit. I'm just curious now, where is this JP? We have Yuhu coming in here. I figure he'll probably light him at some point in the near future. He's, all right, that's the three or 30, 304, FE304. I'll spit it out in a moment. What am I doing? All right, try to track him. Didn't work. Try to track him. Didn't work. Oh, it did work. There you go. And there's the rapid fire thing. You gotta love it. Still trying to track him. Like, come on, man. There we go. So, Many opportunities to track, and that's what is really good about the lower alpha rapid firing guns. Once you get these modules damaged like that, it's easy to perma track them to keep on bam, bam, bam. We're just pinning them down. And the good news here also is that anybody else who shoots them, you get the assist off of that, right? So I get 123 assist along with all the shots up to 2,457 damage. And I believe that's pretty much it. The T50 2 finally gets killed out there by somebody. Maybe the 20, I believe the 25 kills them. They're doing a little ring around the rosy dance over there. T50-2 is make, doing his level best to kill the E25. And we're, oh, I rushed that shot and the E25 rams him. Nice. So a little victory right there. That's gonna end up being a ace tanker. Three kills, 2,457 damage, 550 assist. It's not a super high experience level. I, th I don't think the tank does particularly well in the grand scheme of things. It's a decent little tank. It, you know, you're dropping 150 alpha at tier seven. W when you start talking about trying to shoot tier nines with this thing, it's extremely painful. And you will notice that I shot my share of APCR 
So I'm not saying this is a fantastic tank, but in the right situation, it's pretty fun. It's got decent mobility, a little pew pew gun that can do things like that against the JP if you get that situation. I'm not saying you're always going to run into that situation, but take the opportunity when you can. Interesting little tank, not fantastically good, but I did enjoy that game. And I don't actually, it doesn't bother me to play it, to be honest. Top tier, it's actually pretty darn fun. Again, against tier 9s and a good portion of tier 8s, it can be painful. But there you go. Quick little review of the T23E3. That's all I've got for today. We will see ya.